During the summer of 2008, we ran a field school in British Columbia on the Sunshine Coast. It was a collaborative project with the Tuyama First Nation. Let's see what happened. final piece that was just glaringly obvious within days of starting to work with the Tlaiman was the importance of herring to the Tlaiman people and the very dramatic um, loss of herring today. Up until 1984, for centuries and millennia, in the place that we were excavating, the Tlaiman people would go to gather herring in the spring by the thousands. They would gather herring row and dry it on, collect it on cedar, um, and then dry it for the winter. And they would gather herring itself, and then dry those, and string them together and dry them, and then store them for winter use by the thousands. We're talking about thousands of people over the millennia. Well, herring was one of the foods that our ancestors, our elders, used a lot of you know, it was so plentiful here. So they, you know, it was, um, it was a food that um, was used, to, they dried it, they smoked it, and they used not only the herring, but the roe. Still in its form within the herring, but also the herring spawn. And then you set out the branches and um, then you gathered those. You went to gather them after two or three days and the herring had spawned on the cedar branches. And was this something that went way back in time? Oh gosh, I'm sure it always was. A herring would ball up in these huge roiling balls. Anyone seen a herring ball? Oh, it's just so wonderful, you guys. If you paddle out, you, you can tell because the herrings, the gulls, and the gulls out there, and the eagles are all going nuts. What's happening under the water is the fish, the salmon are coming at the herring, and they're, and they're traveling in the, in the thousands and thousands. And they're all trying to get to the center of this mass of herring, because that's the safest place to be, because the, the salmon are out there trying to, to dip their butts. So they're all trying to get to the center, and you get this massive roiling ball of, of thousands and thousands of herring, where the birds are on top trying to get them as well. So what First Nations people used to do is go out in their canoes with herring rings, so these long cedar sticks that had basically um, tines on them. And they would basically just sweep through the herring ball and they would come up with all this herring on their rig. Traditionally, they would use bones, little teeny bones set in this long pole. In historic times, then they replaced those with nails. So you can imagine like, sweeping this comb through the herring ball. They would gather the herring, put it in their canoes, bring it back here, and dry them in these racks that look like this. The herring used to come and spawn around ending of February and March, early March to mid-March. And so people watched for it. They, they were always prepared and they watched for, you know, the, the seagulls and these other um, types of birds that always came with the, uh, with the spawn, with the herring. 1984, um, up and down the coast, many, many industrial fishing boats came out and they count them in the hundreds it's, and, and Slyman, they remember that year that they could actually walk from boat to boat. They came, they, the industrial boats came, they harvested herrings in the hundreds of thousands and the herrings basically never come back to that spot after people being there collecting that herring for, for generations. We know they were collecting it for generations because people told me the oral traditions are strong. Because the bay next 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 to us, the the time and name for it is water is white with herring spawn. We know because we have 1930s photographs that are the front lawns of Elder Mary George, and she can tell me this is my family's um, herring rack. Look at all those herring and the herring spawn. This we did this every year. I mean, all the families would come together at this spot. You can see it in that black and white archival photo. All that information wasn't enough for DFO, for Department of Fisheries and Oceans, to, to really grasp that, that we have a millennial old herring fishery. 
So if that wasn't enough, we started digging in the ground there, and what we see is every layer that we removed, we're seeing thousands and thousands and thousands of herring bones. People have gone to that spot and processed herring bones over the centuries. So we have the oral traditions, we have the, the photographs from the 30s, um, we have the place names, and now we have the archaeology to really just show that we have a long-term sustained fishery, herring fishery, that stopped in 1984. Of course, I don't see too many boats now. I think there's not too much uh, salmon fishing, of course, because uh, I don't see any, I don't know how they, they must be fishing them more up north, because right here, you don't see the boats anymore. There's lots of prawn fishing, there's, uh, you know, crabs, stuff like that, but uh, we have no herring, so then we don't have the salmon, coho. So there used to be a lot more. Oh, way more. Um, Herring is, as we all know, kind of a foundational species. Everything eats herring. You know, the um, salmon eat herring, the birds eat, the, eat herring, and on, and on it goes. It's a, it's a keystone species. The whole food web is based on it. Likewise, I think a lot of the Sun culture is based on herring. It's a, what I'm calling a cultural keystone species. So, really, it, it's, we have to be conserving herring because it's ecologically the foundation and it's culturally the foundation. It seems to me it's an ethical issue, it's, it's an environmental issue, it's an Aboriginal rights and title issue. And again, it kind of just, that conservation theme has permeated um, everything we've done by looking at the herring every day that kind of we're working on a screen and we pick out another several hundreds of herring bones. It was just screaming to me, this is about conservation, conservation of archaeological sites, conservation of the herring resource conservation of culture.